All right, so we're going to begin mission two of today's activity. In mission two, we were to find a way to decrease the size of a green leaf population without changing the size of the wee bug population. So very similar to what we did before, we're just changing up which organism in the food web that we're going to alter. So our goal, once again, is to decrease the size of this green leaf population without changing the size of the wee bug population. So we can't manipulate this on our chart, and we cannot manipulate this on our chart. So what we'd have to do is manipulate one of these other organisms that are on the food web. So um, our options are to increase stingwings, furbles, or scale, be uh, scale beaks, or decrease stingwing, furbel, or scale beak to cause a population change in the green leaves so that their size would decrease. So once again, if you are on your simulator, you can pause this video, play around with this a little bit, and see what you can come up with. For those of you not on the simulator at home, um, just stay tuned here on this video and I will demonstrate uh, how this will all work. So, how are we going to decrease the green leaf population without touching the wee bug population. Well, one way we can do it is to decrease the furble population. So, when we look at this, furbles eat wee bugs, and wee bugs eat green leaves. When the furble population decreases, they eat fewer wee bugs. This leads to less deaths in the population, and the population of the wee bugs increases. A larger wee bug population will eat more green leaves and leads to more deaths, and the population would then decrease. That's my guess. So again, I'm going to go for an indirect effect. I'm going to affect this population of furbles so that it would uh, it would actually increase the population, the consumer population of the wee bug, which consumes the green leaf. So an indirect effect to lower the green leaf. Let's see if that works. So I'll go on to my simulation over here. I will decrease the furball population dramatically. I'll then lock it. And then we will run our simulation according to our uh, our, our instructions um, for 20 time units, I'm sorry, for 200 time units. And then we're going to analyze that change in the green leaf population. Notice our starting populations are 124 green leaves, 108 wee bugs, and 3 furbles. So let's go ahead and run this guy for 200 time units. And as you can see, it didn't even take 200 time units to show the explosion in that wee bug population, causing them that need more green leaves to sustain themselves. So the green leaf population that started out at 100 has dramatically been impacted. It's been cut down almost um, 80 organisms over this time frame. You'll notice also that there's an explosion in the stingwing population, which is a consumer population that eats wee bugs, since there's an abundance of wee bugs, now those stingwings are also increasing over time. All right, so was my prediction correct? It sure looks like it. So um, go ahead and answer the questions below this video. Continue on with today's lesson.